Hey, what's going on, everybody? Uh, welcome to the second episode um, of Legends Create Legends Create Legends podcast. It's a 300 Fathers podcast. I'm your host, Troy Woods. Trying to get my thoughts together today. Um, whole world is kind of in shock about uh, what happened with Kobe, and I just wanted to kind of, I, I thought it would be really fitting to come on and just share some thoughts with you guys. I'm broadcasting live to Facebook, so if any questions come up, one of the things we're going to try to do, again, this is something different than we did before. When we do these live broadcasts, we're going to try to uh, fill some questions from those who may be watching live so they can get those uh, questions answered or what have you, or, or in this case, just share some thoughts on this particular episode so we can get that into the main podcast. Um, so, wow, I don't even know where to begin. I didn't have a script for this one. Um, I wanted to to kind of come on because as we've just been inundated with stories uh, over over the last 24 hours about Kobe. And um, I wanted to share some of my thoughts on things. Um, and if you have, if you guys are on Facebook, you got any questions or, or, or uh, comments that we can get to just leave those and I'll, I'll get with you guys. So, um, Wow, man. I have I have some friends who are just just go hard Laker fans. I uh, wanted to say something else. I just don't think it would be appropriate today. But they're just go hard Laker fans and um I've I've been a basketball fan my whole life. I grew up a Chicago Bulls fan. Um, you know, MJ is my favorite player ever. And um you know, I I think I I think everybody is trying to come to grips with what happened. Nobody really understands why it would happen. And so I know for me, and just being transparent with you guys, Kobe was, um, I always recognized him as an amazing basketball player. The dude was just, he was just gifted. Um, but as a Jordan fan, one of the things that, uh, one of the things that I often did was when Kobe came into the league, I think it was what 96, you know, Mike was still, Mike was still doing his thing. And, and I was like, man, this, this dude, he, he's, he's trying to do everything like Mike. He's chewing his gum like Mike. He's walking like Mike. He's wearing his shorts like Mike. And so from a basketball sense, I really didn't take the time early on to appreciate everything about Kobe because I felt it was in direct competition with Mike and um, come to find out, I mean, Kobe didn't have any, any problems admitting that that was his idol, somebody he was trying to not only emulate, but go on to beat. And so uh, as, as we progress over the years, over his 20 year career, um, I started probably paying more attention to him after he switched his number. And it wasn't because he switched his number. That's just kind of the time frame that I remember. And I just began to really, um, as I got older, I, I began to really appreciate his approach to basketball. Recognized as one of the best basketball players in the world. And I'm, I'm going to share something with you guys. I know some of you guys are going to be like, what? Not you. Um, but when I, when I view athletes, I know they say you're supposed to leave everything on the court, just go by the eyeball test of their game. But when you start having these greatest conversations, I, I look at the totality of the person, right? And so I really, um, even though initially I didn't really take to his game too much, knew he was a great guy. Like I said, I had my thing with Jordan, but I really started paying attention to his mindset around the game and his approach, his tenacity, his, his, his just, they called him black. I mean, he just had a killer instinct about the game of basketball, right? So we can fast forward all the way through his career. And this is why I wanted to do this particular podcast. And I wanted to share with my friends on Facebook. Um, someone, uh, Vanessa saying she really can't cope with this. It just hits different. It, it does, um, and I, and I, Vanessa, I think that's where I'm going with this. Um, as Kobe retired, you know, he messed up his Achilles. He still continued to play, and and he 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 stayed with that organization even during their down years. But 
when Kobe retired, I really started what got me. I was so impressed with his second act. What I mean by that is we had the we had his approach to basketball, and then we had his approach to his second act, what he was going to do with life after basketball. He passed away at 41 years old along with his, his beautiful daughter and, and the other families and um, people that were on the helicopter with him. But this guy did so much at the age of 41 that – it really I don't know if you if, if anyone out there felt like this, let me know. I started thinking about what he accomplished in forty one years and it made me really look at myself and be like, All right, dude, like what are you doing? Like are you are you setting goals? Are you meeting goals? And I became more so I hate to say more so, I was so impressed at his approach to fatherhood. Um, it just really jumped out at me. I, he just did, um, he just recently did a podcast. It's called All the Smoke with um, Matt Barnes and um, Steven Jackson. And he talked about, you know, he talked about his kids and he talked about everything. He talked about his kids. And, you know, you're thinking this, this, I, this basketball icon. And is he gonna have a is he gonna have a boy, you know, somebody to carry on his name? And what I was super impressed about with Kobe was he was instilling this in his daughters. And he he started to take an elite approach toward fatherhood. And it, it, Things started translating. You could see his game started translating into the life. He was like translating it and giving the blueprint to his daughter. Why is this important? One of the things that one of the things that I value about this is, as men, so when we when we when we're going to have children, I want a son. I want a son. Rightfully so. And I talked about this recently in um, a post on Instagram. And we're terrified of having daughters. And a daughter is actually, um, Darnell said he was just speaking on that. A daughter is actually, um, every man wants a son, but every man needs a daughter. I just recently heard that, and it just kind of stuck with me. And so I, I look at Kobe's life as a dad, as a businessman. I mean, even at 41, the man had already won what, and, and an Oscar um, for a, a short film, I would think. I think he produced called Dear Basketball. So he w he was so accomplished already in his short years of retirement, and it just you know to have that happen to be with his daughter, and um, at the time that it happened, and and just you know you try not to let your mind go there, but you know as a dad, you know to just be in that situation. Probably knowing because he's been in a helicopter probably hundreds of times, I'm sure. And you know that this is just different. And um, not only to be there with other people, but to be there with his baby girl and um, and just wonder what type of emotions he was going through at that time. It's kind of hard to really fathom. I know I was real I was probably emotional and sensitive last night. I think I... Uh, hugged and, and, and kissed Kelly and the kids a, a couple of different times. And, let, you know, it was just one of those things where you just kind of, you kind of sit back and, um, and just assess life. And I just want to encourage men and fathers today to make sure that you are doing everything that you can because yesterday proved no one knew that at 41, it would be over for him. And we just think that tomorrow's promise, and I know that sounds cliche, but we say goodbye to our loved ones every day. We have little things go on in life that, you know, tick people off or tick each other off. And we just we just go through so many different things. And when you send your kids to school or you all, you know, you and your spouse, you go to work or whatever, you just never really know. Like I, I was thinking about his wife Vanessa. Like she's probably seen she's seen him get on that chopper so many times, 
and fly off to wherever he had to fly to. And I'm sure she just never really knew. Um, she just never really knew that, like, yo, this this is it. Like, all right, you know, you just think, all right, baby, I'll see you when you get home. And you just never stop to think about, is this really the last time? Um, read some time. For those of you all that are listening to this on the final podcast, please bear with me. I am broadcast. Uh, I am re- broadcasting this recording live, so I'm taking some questions and reading some comments on this particular episode. Um, AJ said, "Me too." <laughs> Bryce was sick of my hugs. Yes, yeah, man. Clark too. Clark was getting on. He was like, he didn't really understand what was going on. Um, what's up, Danny? I've been thinking about this all day. What have I done with this point in my life? Uh. If I leave this earth tomorrow, what legacy will I leave? What have I instilled in my children? I've had a very near-death experience with my son. Wow, Danny, I didn't know that, man. Our next moment is not promised. Yeah, man. I mean, we we just we we just have to be more careful along our steps, man. And and um, like I said, with this 300 Fathers project, I uh, I I don't profess to know it all. I don't know it all when it comes to fatherhood. Like I said, my oldest son is um uh is is he's 10 he's going on 11 so you know i know what it's like to have 11 year old and younger but i don't i started this because i I wanted a place for men and fathers to come together and feel free to share and for us to build each other um and so many of so many of us are in different walks of life whether we we have a, a nine to five job or we're entrepreneurs out here getting it um, you know, or, or no matter what it is, we can get so caught up in everything that we have going on that we just never really um, take the time to to just spend with our family. You know, um, I'll, I'll admit, guys, like I haven't always been the best with just sitting down having dinner with my family. You know, I'm as when you're an entrepreneur, your mind never stops working, and that, these are conversations that you know the other things. Even with Kobe, I was able to kind of appreciate. And he kind of like watching him, it kind of, it was like a self check moment because I'm like, yo, this, am I being as focused and dedicated to my craft as I should be? And so we, we, we take these moments, we take dinners for granted, you know, we kiss our kids and, you know, just take for granted that everyone's waking up the next day, you know? And so I wanted to just do this impromptu um, podcast Again, the name of the new podcast is Legends Create Legends, and and the whole and it's tough because I think about Kobe and his daughter, and the 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 name Legends Create Legends. The whole premise is to, no matter what you're doing in life, to become legendary, to become a legend, and then take that blueprint, give it to someone else or other people, and help them to become legends in their own right. That's the whole purpose of this podcast. So we'll be dealing with, of course, fatherhood stuff. We'll be dealing with business and different things. And and I want you all to be a part of this journey because basically 300 Fathers is a media company that's dedicated to our fathers in, in the short sense, if I had to say it like that. And so a lot of the content that we create will come from in-house, but it'll also come from from you guys, we want to create content that's going to be applicable to the lives of fathers in all walks of life. We deal with a lot of stuff as men. We don't we don't talk as much as we should. Um, you know, I'm in a couple fatherhood groups on Facebook, and just some of the things that I see shared, it's just like yeah, men really don't have an outlet. Women have been holding it down, um, and it, and again, this is never a slight on on mothers, single mothers. It, it just it just isn't. This is just to create a platform for men to come together so that we can be stronger men for, for our homes and for our community um, at large. But guys, again, I don't have any words um, really to just describe kind of how I've been feeling the last couple of days. Um, It's just been a real shock. I'm still kind of in disbelief. I told Kelly, I said, I don't think we're going to really be able to get past this or start getting past this until after the memorial services and everything have been had. And then we can kind of, put things together and move on it's not like i knew kobe but i just follow an example and even as as men i want to encourage you guys if you if you need a mentor in your life you don't always have to have that email address and phone number the way that the internet is working now 
you can follow people. Uh, you can follow people. You can learn from people. When people have conferences, go out, see them, get to meet them, and just try to. Everybody's not perfect. This is not about being uh, perfect, but it is about taking bits and pieces and being able to apply it uh, to your life to to make yourself better. Um, yep. Vanessa said, uh, Lord bless and comfort her in this time. And yeah, you know, you, you, I, to lose a husband and a child at the same time is, is, is devastating. And on top of that, I don't want to make light of the other families that were involved uh, because there were, I, I believe there was a, a mother, father and child on the helicopter as well. So our condolences go out to, to not only Kobe's family, but everyone involved, the pilot, everybody. It's, it's just, um, it's really unfortunate, guys, but I wanted to make sure I hopped on here again to do um, episode two of Legends Create Legends with you guys. I really do like this format uh, of being able to to go live to take questions. Um, we got a lot coming with this as far as how we want to do it, um, bringing guests on, being able to interact with you guys, and then pushing the content out uh, to the podcast platforms um, and everywhere else. Um, this is actually going to be on YouTube as well. So listen, if you guys um, have any questions, um, if, if there's some things that you want to see on this podcast, if you want us to cover it and you don't, you can leave it in the comments, but if you don't want to leave it in the comments, you can inbox me directly or you can email legends, L-E-G-E-N-D-S, legends at 300fathers.com. Again, it's legends at 300fathers.com. And make sure um, you guys are following us on all of our social media platforms, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, everywhere, Facebook. Just follow us and keep up. Um, also, um, our mailing list, I'm going to drop a link in the description below so you guys can sign up for the, our, our mailing list. Get anything that we're putting out. We do have some events that are coming up this year that I want a lot of fathers to take place of. They're going to jump off here in the DMV. AJ, thanks, man. I appreciate you, man. And, and bro, AJ, I just want to tell you, man, public in front of everybody, man, super proud of the job that you're doing with Bryce, man. Um, I know what you got going on, and um, I know the dreams and stuff that you got and that you're pushing uh, for you, little man. I just want to congratulate you on that. Keep doing a good job. But, yeah, guys, if you guys have any questions, definitely let me know. But we're going to go ahead and wrap up Episode 2 of Legends Create Legends. It's been a pleasure, guys. Again, my name is Troy Woods. I am your host. Until the next one, take care. God bless.